There's somebody from Plasto, I think. No. And I think your name was Frank. I worked in the detox unit at Lowell General for years. These are patients. These are people we're supposed to be helping. We're not helping them by criminalizing. What are we doing here? Where's our common sense? We need to look at this policy that was started back in the 70s. We need to rework it. And we need to come out with a positive solution. As a taxpayer, I'm tired of having taxes go up for more prisons, more incarcerations. I don't want to see that anymore. I want to see people get better. It is not working. We need to do something else. I am in support. It is one of the first initial steps in a long walk that we need to take. Okay. Friendly Jay. I represent an organization of over 5,000 active duty and retired law enforcement officers, of which I'm very proud to say that Superintendent Van Mickler is a member of. We are criminal justice professionals who believe that the war on drugs is a terrible, abject failure that is a terribly destructive social policy. We, we passed an amendment to our con United States Constitution to uh, enforce alcohol prohibition. <coughs> If you notice, we didn't do that to enforce drug prohibition. Our Constitution is getting shredded bit by bit because of this destructive policy. We ended prohibition because of the violence problem. I have never, ever been to a domestic violence call or a fight call where someone smokes marijuana. And if any officer told you they'd rather deal with people who've been drinking, they are lying. And I was very shocked to hear the Chiefs Association get up here and borderline advocate the reinstitution of prohibition, one of the biggest failures of our, of our society. Tobacco kills over 430,000 people per year. I don't see us trying to ban tobacco. We've educated the public. In fact, we tax tobacco ridiculously to pay for education. Who's going to come up here, aside from me, and speak against a policy uh, that provides a lot of funding for my job? Like I said, I would rather lose my job. Uh, I would gladly lose my job if we could end this terrible policy. It generates money to put people in cages for making poor personal choices. And these are our fellow citizens that are locked up because they do something that should be treated as a medical problem. And furthermore, what right does the government have to tell me what to do in my own house if I'm hurting no one else? And what people have to remember is that everything the government does is at the point of a gun. If you pass a law that says, I can't play ping pong in my house, and I say, oh, I'm not going to follow this law. Eventually, it comes down to the point of a gun, because the police will come. If you resist arrest, eventually, you're going to get a gun pointed at you. This is a terrible policy. This is a great bill. We need to stop turning our fellow citizens into criminals for using a drug that's far less dangerous than alcohol. And I support this bill wholeheartedly. So we will call House Bill 1623 to a conclusion. I will announce the subcommittee names. First thing we do is name the chairman of the subcommittee, and you know, usually you pick on somebody that isn't here, so John Paul will be the chairman of the subcommittee. <laughs> Thank you. Dave Wells will be on the subcommittee, Eileen Nielsen, and Representative Burge. So we're finished That's with the day, start. ladies and gentlemen. Comments? <laughs> Nothing to say at this point. Next is the House Education Committee. Hearing HB 1504 FN directing New Hampshire to withdraw from the No Child Left Behind Act. Uh, good afternoon, members of the committee. I'm Jim Forsyth of Stratford, New Hampshire. Our organization, New Hampshire Parents for Educational Freedom, helped write this bill to opt out of New Hampshire out of No Child Left Behind. Um, or any subsequent reauthorizations. Uh, organizations seek to put more power into the, and responsibility in, of education into the hands of parents and teachers since they are the most capable and the most caring. I strongly urge you to recommend this bill as ought to pass. In my research for this bill, I have yet to find a New Hampshire resident who thinks no child left behind has been successful. Parents are upset over the misdirection of classroom resources to no child left behind and away from more creative paths to education. Teachers are frustrated with the teach to the test mentality they are forced to pursue. School boards find that Washington, D.C. seems to be getting more involved in the classroom while they lose influence. Administrators have difficulty predicting the future, having to set aside millions in case their schools don't make quote unquote adequate yearly progress. With all this frustration and anger of no child left behind nationwide, 
The tragic part is that No Child Left Behind hasn't had any significant positive impact. A Harvard University study, that's the one represented, Ingrid's and Left, you mentioned that, I have it here for you. Um, a Harvard study tracking achievement gaps and assessing the impact of No Child Left Behind on the gaps said, quote, this report concludes that neither a significant rise in achievement nor closure of the racial e achievement gap is being achieved. Small early gains in math have been reverted to pre-existing pattern. If that is true, all the pressure and sanctions have, so far, been in vain or even counterproductive. The federal government is providing $412 million a year to help pay for a part of the additional testing required by law, and many states claim that they're being forced to divert state funds to testing and other provisions they believe, believe are unnecessary." End quote. There was a lot of reports in here, too, that a lot of states claim that this mandate is underfunded meaning that although money does come in to fund it, they're having to add additional funds to that. Um, the cost in the financial note says where the money's being spent, but, but my question back would be, and this is research that should be done, is how much additional, uh, how much of that money is being spent simply to meet the mandate, and is there any additional funding being spent to meet the mandate? The reason that No Child Left Behind has failed is simple, and means that any subsequent revisions will also end in failure. And that reason is that New Hampshire knows best what is good for its children, not Washington, D.C. Solutions that come from Washington are more likely to be influenced by special interests and lobbyists and be of a one-size-fits-all nature. Our ability to influence educational solutions dictated by Washington is virtually non-existent. Meanwhile, New Hampshire citizens, citizen legislature is extremely accountable to the people. I trust the New Hampshire House and this education committee far more than I trust Washington. You have friends, families, vocal constituents, and school children in New Hampshire schools. You are accountable in a way that Washington never will be. This is not a Republican versus Democratic issue. This is a New Hampshire versus Washington issue. Please do the right thing for the children, parents, and teachers of New Hampshire and say no to Washington and recommend this bill ought to pass. And I, and I will throw in, I, I understand the, the financial difficulties. Um, if there's a, if, if, if this, can't pass as is. I do do. I would like to see some message sent to Washington to let them know the frustration we're seeing in New Hampshire. Thank you. Question for Mr. Um, one thing I could share is that the legislature did send a resolution to Congress last year okay. expressing our um, very strong desire and uh, urge that it be eliminated, but that it be carefully authorized. Right? carefully revised in the reauthorization process. And, and one thing not everyone realizes, I think, is that all federal money for education is now subsumed under No Child Left Behind. Yeah. So that includes special education money, all, fe all federal money. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you for your testimony. Dean Mitchell. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Dean Mitchell, representing the Hampshire School Boards Association in opposition to this bill. We are very sympathetic to the intent and the frustration that has brought forward this bill. However, um, and we also, as an association, have a long-standing resolution, which I brought to you last year when the House was passing its resolution. And we, we are really working hard to seek uh, funding levels that are consistent with the authorization levels and the needs that were identified with NCLB on its passage. We're looking for more flexibility, alternative assessment methodologies, especially growth models. We want to revisit the sanction process and look at sanctions uh, that really apply only when the same group within the same content area. I mean, I've, I've talked to you about many of these issues. What bef what's before you right now is a financial issue. And the problem is that many of these programs, we're not just talking about Title I. What, have been, what has been subsumed under NCLB are programs such as school improvement, the Reading First, Even Study, School Reform, Impact Aid, Improving Teacher Quality, Money for Tutors for Math and Science, the Innovative Program. These have all been subsumed under NCLB. 